Hi, and today let's take a look at some fragrances from French niche brand PDK perfumes. I have a few samples of their most popular creations and one full-size bottle, so let's get started right away. Okay, let's begin with Velvet Tonka. It's quite a new fragrance. This one is one of my favorites from the brand. I like its velvety, fuzzy quality. It's really powdery to my nose, like um, baking powder or icing sugar. And you know, David Benedek, the founder of the brand, he talks about his inspiration behind this fragrance. It's a Moroccan traditional dessert with orange blossom and almond that his grandma did when he was a child. I find it so lovely. They played around the note of orange blossom, very common in perfumery, accompanied with almond, rose and tobacco and of course tonka in the base, plus vanilla and woody notes. And it all turned out as a very unique, very appealing scent. The notes may sound very sweet and yes, it's um, quite a gourmand fragrance, but honestly it's so perfectly balanced, solid, a bit dry, velvety. It's just the way French perfumes are done. Sweet, but not too much. Elegant, first of all. What I imagine is a quiet autumn evening at home, a scent of uh, almond cookies in the kitchen, dimmed light from the candles. And you know, being a gender neutral fragrance, mm, it has this feminine spirit in it, like a scent of mother or grandmother. It's a piece of love and comfort that is always with you. I feel here this imprint of motherhood. Imagine soft, warm skin of mother's hands, little wrinkles around the eyes, the smile. It's very subjective perception, but just the image that I draw in my mind. Very lovely. And I'm considering getting a full bottle, maybe in autumn. It reminds me Italica from Zorjov, but I prefer this one. While Italica is truly, truly gourmand, like edible gourmand almond cake, Velvet Tonka is, on the other hand, it's still a perfume, it's still a fragrance. And that's what I like when the fragrance evokes imagination, but doesn't try to imitate a certain thing. Mm, it's so beautiful. It's it's a hug in a bottle, and I would give Velvet Tonka nine on ten. It's one of my favorites from BDK. Love it. Ah. Let's move on to Tuberose Imperial. Okay, um, that's a diva. She's a queen. <laughs> She's. She's chic, she's bright, attractive, and as the name says, tuberose enters the room. <laughs> I love tuberose, but mm, I prefer a bit more youthful green, maybe a bit bubblegummy tuberose, like um, Dosson from Diptyque, for example. That's my type of tuberose. But this one, mm, she's different, she has character. I would say this fragrance does have gender. It's really feminine fragrance, sensual, sexy, loud. It's broadly projecting. It's a femme fatale among the fragrances, but it's not dirty, it's not indolic. It's really beautiful. Beside tuberose, we have here jasmine, ylang ylang, iris, geranium, and the seductive base with patchouli, woody notes, incense, vanilla, and benzoin. That sounds so delicious. I can only say good things about this fragrance, it's gorgeous, but I wouldn't pick it for myself. I find it a bit too strong for me and Ylang Ylang is... Mm, I'm traumatized with Ylang Ylang, maybe. <laughs> maybe I will tell the story one day. I can see this perfume being very popular and loved among many women. Um, if you are a glamorous diva outside or inside <laughs> you like being seen and that's a scent for you in my personal rating i would say it's seven on ten it just doesn't fit my image if my inner diva wants out she grabs some um, grand soir from maison francisco chan but still um it's a beautiful fragrance next will be passe soir 
Oh no, it's somewhere. Oh, just a sec. There he is. Oh, okay. Passe soir, not tonight. This is how we translate it from French. It's it's such a wow fragrance. It's playful, flirting, independent with character. And the character is a Parisian girl, young, beautiful, confident. I like its fruity notes, mandarin, pear, queens, all spiced up with pepper and ginger, some floral notes, patchouli and woody base. It's not a juvenile fruity frag, it's a truly sparkling, bright, spicy, fruity composition. It's so delicious, so juicy. It's one of the best from the brand and truly a bestseller for a good reason. Mm, so delicious and rather universal fragrance for day, for evening, for any season, any time of the day. It's a fragrance for every girl, whether it's a confident girl or a bit shy one, whether it's a mom or a senior lady. It's fragrance for everyone. It has so many facets that any girl can find something in it. Inclusive fragrance, let's call it this way. Inclusive. <laughs> I love it. If you come across BDK, perfume brand, try Passe Soir. It's magical. I will give it 9 on 10. It's it's on my wish list, my endless, ever-growing wish list. <laughs> mm. Next will be Rouge Smoking. As far as I know, it's one of the best sellers from the brand. It's even out of stock. <laughs> This way. I had such high hopes about this fragrance, but unfortunately it didn't really meet my expectations. Mm, it's not bad, it's very very lovely. Let me think of it. The main accord here is cherry. Cherries, berries, vanilla, ambroxan in the base. Sounds so good. Maybe they tried to replicate the cherry seed even. At least for me it feels more than just a cherry. It's not too sweet, it's very pleasant, a bit almond even. Mm. Yeah, a bit almondy. Hmm. But what I'm missing here is the juiciness of the cherry pulp. Cherries are my favorite berries and I'm waiting for summer just to get some cherries. But strangely, fragrances with cherry accord, they all seem a bit synthetic to me. The color of liquid is lovely though. I know how popular rouge smoking is, but it doesn't cause much emotions in me personally. It's just a pleasant, yummy juice. Mm. But what I like about it is that it's contemporary. It doesn't smell dated or vintage. If I would visualize this scent, I would see a transparent but strong silk, maybe carmine red silk. You know, silk is one of the strongest natural fibers being so light. Yeah, like a silk transparent uh, tissue. I would rate this perfume 7.5 on 10. I wouldn't wear it often, but maybe once in a while. Overall, it's a beautiful, pleasant and sort of put together scent. Very popular in a fragrance community, very loved. Next, let's check Bouquet d'Hongrie. Is it, is it right? Is it like this? Bouquet de Hongrie. Okay. Oh. Mm -hmm. I have to say, I'm not a big fan of this fragrance. All I feel is a strawberry soap, bitter, soapy feel in it that I find quite sharp in the beginning. It's fruity floral composition with jasmine, rose, beer, black currant. Those I don't feel at all, which is strange because usually the black currant and fragrances is easily detectable. It's an elegant, feminine, very clean scent, very easygoing, but it doesn't impress me, it doesn't tell me anything new. Dry down is better than the opening, more soft, more floral. Um, I guess that's all I can say about this fragrance beautiful but subjectively just doesn't appeal to me. I will give this fragrance five and a half on ten. I don't really enjoy the soapiness in the fragrance. Mm -hmm. 
let's move on to wood jasmine I got it, I got it. Um, another fragrance that uh, doesn't really resonate with me, the wood jasmine. Um, it's very heavy on jasmine and it's indolic. Uh, plum note is also very heavy here. Incense, patchouli, vanilla in the base. I wouldn't reach for it. It's mostly plum and jasmine as a couple. It's just not my cup of tea. Um, I will pass this fragrance. There is much more appealing stuff from the same brand. Maybe I would rate it 5 on 10 in my personal rating, which means um, I wouldn't spray it on myself, but I would enjoy it on someone else. Yeah, I'm very careful with jasmine. I don't like its indolic aspect. When it dries down, it feels more pleasant, more soft, but maybe it's just not a fragrance for me. So the next one is Crème de Cuir. That's a lovely scent. It's so smooth and creamy and fresh at the same time. It's warm, a bit smoky. It evokes in my mind a sunset in the city. Outdoor terraces full of people in summer. Scent of chic perfumes projecting in the air. Diffused smell of cigarettes, light leather jackets. Is it too much? <laughs> It has an accord of white suede, but very digestible, very safe suede accord. So subtle that um, even people like myself who run away from leathery fragrances can find this one pleasant. Creme de Queer is mostly fruity and sandalwoody fragrance. Suede accord just holds the composition together, not allowing it to roll into a scent of simple body cream. That's what I mean. And uh, I can ensure you, it's not a leather dominant fragrance, it's beautiful creamy creation. It smells expensive and elegant, a touch of sweetness in it, it dries down into a soft cozy vanilla, um, very appropriate for evening, an event or, or just a dinner in a restaurant. Look, the menu of this fragrance, it, it makes me smile. Mandarin, bergamot, pineapple, berries, suede and sandal as I mentioned birch and solar accord. I, I don't know what chemistry stands behind the last two, but it smells convincing. Maybe the slight smoky feel in it. I don't know what it is, but it smells like a golden hour <laughs> in the city. I will rate Crème de Cuir 8.5 on 10. It's delicious, beautiful and highly recommended. Believe me, it's more cream than suede. It's a safe, safe fragrance. And the last one, Tapa Rose. It's slightly more expensive than other fragrances and the bottle is really beautiful. Tapa Rose. Mm. Mm. Another amazing creation from BTK. Um, is it just me, my imagination, or is the brand really creating the feeling of um, a certain texture in their fragrances? You see, like uh, Cri Chanel, it's a cashmere sweater, Crème de Cuir, a suede glove, <laughs> rouge smoking is a silk shirt, and so is this fragrance. For me, it's a black velvet. It absorbs all the noises and troubles around. With this fragrance, I imagine myself behind a heavyweight velvet curtain. Very gothic fragrance, but surprisingly comforting scent, like November evening. It's deep, deep chocolate rose scent. It's smoky with tobacco accords, but very gentle. Very heavy bass notes, but heavy in a good way, kind of grounding even. I find this one a bit melancholic. Um, I see it in darker colors. It's mainly a rose fragrance, but chocolatey, a bit earthy. Not too sweet, not suffocating, just calm, dark, cocoon. Amazing experience. And wow, it's so gothic. 
I like when patchouli are sort of chocolatey. In my rating of wearability, this creation receives 7.5 on 10. I would definitely wear it, but it needs a certain mood or a certain season maybe, certain weather. But really beautiful, velvety, dark, amazing fragrance. Like all the others from the brand. <laughs> Those fragrances are relevantly less expensive in comparison to many other niche brands. The only thing I wish is um, a bit smaller bottles maybe, like 50 or 30 ml. They have 100 ml bottles and the travel size bottles. I wish to see like um, maybe half size of this one. That would be the perfect for my collection. And of course I should mention my favorite one, Cri Chanel. I already have the full size bottle. I was using it almost the whole winter. Cri Chanel is a cashmere sweater. It's a warm cup of black tea with notes of sandalwood, sweet fig. It's lovely, cozy, atmospheric fragrance for men, for women, for everyone else. It's um, fluffy and kind, very kind and gentle scent. It was saving me the whole winter with its coziness. Cri Chanel is my most favorite from the brand. The second comes maybe Velvet Tonka, also full-size, bottle-worthy, and maybe Passessoir. So that was my review of some PDK fragrances, not all of them, but I believe those are the most popular ones. I hope maybe it will inspire you to try something new.